Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I'm the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, I am going to show you how to create a Q&A form in Moodle and then we are going to compare the features of a Q&A form with the form for the standard form for general use as found in Moodle. So let's take a look at our objectives um, visually here. I want you to see them. As I already mentioned verbally, we're going to create a Q&A form and then I am going to compare a Q&A form with a standard form for general use as found in Moodle. So here I am, I'm already logged into my Moodle course. I've already turned on editing, which is why this button is now red, and I need to create a new form. So we've done this several times before, but we're gonna review it again. We're going to click on add an activity or resource, and then we're going to go down here to forum and we're going to click on add as, as I've just shown you. Now, of course, we always have to give our form a name, so we'll just give it that name. The description you can leave blank if you want, but you often, as I mentioned in prior videos, you can provide you know, general instructions on how to approach the forum in the description section, or you can describe the purpose or whatever you want. Now, for the example in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a Q&A forum. A Q&A forum, the unique feature of a Q&A forum is that the student needs to reply obviously to the question or obviously to the discussion before they see the responses of peers. This prevents the student from just kind of, you know, going along with what other people have saying and they're forced to think creatively on their own first. Uh, that is the primary benefit in my opinion. You can also use these forms if you so desire as a form of assessment. So you have like an open-ended question or, you know, you have some other means where you want to get information from the students. However, I would caution that because students will find ways to send their answers to each other, you know, through email or through, you know, Facebook or something. And it, it opens the door to some dishonest behavior if the students choose to go down that route. So normally you can use the Q&A form as a way to have students do their own thinking and to express their opinion without being influenced by what other people in the course are saying or thinking about that particular topic. So I click on Q&A in the forum type drop-down box and I click save and display so I can show this to you. Now I can add as many questions as I want because I am the teacher. So every question that I add, the students have to, you know, the students need to respond to it before they can see what their other friends have said. So I click here, add a new question. Okay and I give it a name, example question, and something silly like, how was your day, as an example. And when I'm done, I go down here and I click post to forum. Okay, and so now I have my first question right here, and then I'm going to switch now to being, the, to being logged in as a student, like so. I'm now logged in as a student and I click on this new form that was just created and notice carefully this little information in the red box. This is a question and answer form. In order to see other responses to these questions, you must first post your answer. So as a student, I cannot see how my peers have responded to this question until I respond to it myself. So uh, let me go back as a teacher. I'm going to post a response. I am okay. So remember, I'm logged in as a teacher right now. And there we go. And so I update this. I'm now logged in as a student. Notice how there is now one reply. But if I want to see that one reply, I cannot see. I do not know what the subject is. I don't even know who the author is of this. Remember, I'm logged in as a student right now. And it tells me, Moodle tells me, this post cannot be viewed by you, probably because you have not posted in the discussion the maximum edited time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it tells you why you cannot see the answer. Now, remember, I am logged in as a student. I'm now going to respond to this as a student. Click reply. And then hopefully, sometimes you have to wait for the editing time, which can take up to 30 minutes, but hopefully that will not be a problem here. And so let's see here. Oh yes, got the editing time. So let me edit this. I'm logged in as a teacher. 
and save changes. All right. Now, so obviously we have to wait 30 minutes for the student to be able to see the response because Moodle has that 30 minute uh, wait period. But after the 30 minutes, you would see the response right here as shown, but you know, we're not gonna sit around and wait for that. So this is how the uh, Q&A forum works. It allows you as a teacher to post a question you want your students to answer without them being influenced by other people's responses. So uh, again, different classes might require this sort of a, of a feature. For example, a, a class on critical thinking or maybe a debate class or some other class where you know original thought is, is a requirement for it. Um, in comparison to a forum for, for a standard forum for general use, in a, in a Q and A forum, only the teacher can post questions, or you can call them discussion topics, and the students only have the ability to respond to however many questions the teacher posts. Students cannot make questions; they cannot post questions in these type of forums. Only the teacher has that authority. So um, it's kind of a blend of. Of, of a general forum, but only the teacher has discussion creating powers and the students cannot see the, the responses of other people until they have um, responded first to the forum. And of course, if, if, if people want, they can reply to each other's answers, et cetera, et cetera. So there you have it. That is how the Q&A forum works. I hope that this video was useful for you. Thank you very much.